Alas, tis my final hour. I will surely die. I am too far gone to recover, and for the plague there is no cure. Unless, unless a cure might be found in the stars. See now, according to the stars, the way to cure the plague is to treat the fever it provokes. Oh, can it be true? Might a disease so monstrous as the plague be cured by treating it as if it were an exceeding bad fever? Then I must use powerful herbs to bring the fever to crisis and break it. Let me see now. Angelica and dandelion for heat, uh, borage to provoke sweating, infuse them in wine, uh, strain and distill the mixture to produce a most powerful strong water. Huzzah! I am cured! <laughs> I shall now go forth with my miraculous strong water to cure all London of the plague. Here comes a lady queer and her little wary. Her name is Lady Scarlet, what can her trouble be? God give you good day, madam. How may I? Are you Mr. Foreman? Um, Mr. Simon Foreman, the, the doctor? I, madam, I am indeed Dr. Simon Foreman. I bid you welcome to my consulting chambers. Uh, mistress, uh... Mistress... Allen, Mistress Avis Allen of Lambeth. Uh, pray tell me your age, if you please, madam. I am three and thirty years of age. And how might I do you service this day, Mistress Allen? Uh, pray describe your troubles to me. Well, the pain started full late last eve upon retiring to bed. Not that I am in the habit of retiring so late, but my husband did desire a special supper of cold meats to celebrate and give thanks for... for... Well, uh, in any case, it, it started in the night and it continued until dawning. That being the pain in my head a and the chundering. A moment whilst I make note of this. A headache and involuntary purging. Is that all? Aye, that is all. And thinking on it, my complaint to seem most trifling. And you, you are doubtless busy with important cases. Oh, like the plague! Yea, verily, mayhap, I should not have come after all. Uh, good day, Dr. Foreman. I, I beseech you, pardon me, for I have wasted your time. Prithee, do not go, uh, for I assure you, madam, your case verily is important to me. And tis important to you, is it not, Mistress Allen? Else you would not have come this day. Well, uh, I... Let us consult the stars now, then, shall we? What is the cause of Mistress Allen's suffering? Thank you. 
you are with child, Mistress Allen. Twas the reason for your celebration last evening, methinks? Aye, but how did you know? I can see it in my chart, madam. There is a planet aligned with Scorpio at present, Scorpio being the constellation that rules over such matters. Uh, pray tell, how long has it been since your monthly courses? It has been fourteen weeks since my courses, and yesterday I did feel the child quicken. So, indeed, twas the cause for our celebration, as you say. <laughs> for I, I have been with child before, you see, but tis never. And Mr. Allen and I do pray this one will be born alive. <laughs> There, there, dear lady. The presence of the planet Mercury in my chart does suggest you suffer from anxious passions on account of your condition, and given your ill-favoured history, I warrant twas the twin burdens of hope and fear that provoked your troubles last evening. Oh, I see. Pray take this flask of wine, madam. It has been infused with cloves, ginger root, and cinnamon. Drink of it each morning, and you should soon feel much improved. Verily, oh, I will do as you advise. I thank ye heartily, sir. Fare ye well, Dr. Foreman. Fare you well, Mistress Allen. Good day, sir. You are Simon Foreman, the physician, are you not? Uh, these are your rooms. Indeed, I am he, and well met, sir. Be it Thomas Blagg I have the honour of welcoming to my humble consulting chambers, the Dean of Rochester Cathedral. Indeed, tis I, Thomas Blagg. Uh, though it is not upon church business that I come to you this day, tis upon a matter of my own that I require counsel. I have lately been offered some very lucrative investment opportunities, and, uh, well, it is said that God speaks to us through the stars, does he not? Indeed he does. Tis well known that astrology is but a conduit for the word of God, as interpreted using scientific means. And now, these investments of which you speak, pray tell of them, if you please. Two merchant ships will shortly set sail on very lucrative trading expeditions. I do not possess the coin to invest in both. Hence, I must choose between them. And I must choose very wisely indeed. Mm, for sea voyages are most perilous. And if my ship were to founder or be captured by pirates, I would lose my entire investment. Aye, forsooth. T'would be most lamentable to say nothing of the poor souls who might lose their lives. Who are, naturally, the greater of my concerns. Aye, naturally. And whither might these ships be bound? The first is bound for the Spice Islands of the East. Tis a voyage to be undertaken by a ship named the Conquering Cherub. The other is the Pride of Yarmouth. She is to bring back sugar from the Americas. Have you now the information you require? Then, perchance, you may divine for me upon which of these two ships our Lord God has bestowed his divine blessing. Aye, Dean Blagg, we may now consult the stars. Should Thomas Blagg invest in the voyage of the conquering cherub, or that of the pride of Yarmouth?
first, I must advise you that your investment will bring about a change in fortune for you. I should hope so. Indeed, it is the reason for my desire to make such an investment. Uh, but in which ship? You must invest in the Bride of Yarmouth. The Bride of Yarmouth? The Bride? But how on earth... <sighs> Allow me to explain, Dean Blarg. In the House of Marriage, we see the planet Venus, which does represent femininity. And what is the feminine element of a wedding? Tis the bride. Ergo, the bride of Yarmouth. D -d -d do you now see? I assure you, my, my logic is most sound. Doubtless it is, though it is of no use to me, for I said nothing of a ship called the Bride of Yarmouth. Twas the Pride of Yarmouth. Pride, with a P! Ah, verily, but I... Oh, tush, Dr. Foreman. I will not judge you harshly, for in truth I too do oft find myself thus befuddled. <laughs> we elder gentlemen cannot expect to be as sharp as once we were, can we? <laughs> Sir... I, I hardly think we're of the same age. Prithee, Sarah, as much as I would love to bide and discourse with you, it is almost time for my afternoon nap. Uh, mayhap you would benefit from one also. Uh, good day, Dr. Foreman, and keep ye well. Sir, pray tell, are these the consulting chambers of Simon Foreman, Doctor of Astrology and Physic? Indeed, tis I, Doctor Simon Foreman. And your name, madam? Emma Sharp of Shoreditch, sir. Five and twenty years of age. Welcome, Miss Sharp. And how may I do you service this day? Well, tis a trifle delicate. A man has asked me to be his wife. A dear, kind man. But, but, <gasps> I fear you will think me cold, Doctor Foreman. There, there, madam, whatever is the matter? Well, he is exceeding advanced in years. I do worry he may not be long for the world, and if he were to die, I do not think I could bear it. <gasps> Verily, I would not. Indeed, methinks I would rather not marry him at all. Am I very heartless, Dr. Foreman? Nay, not in the least, madam. Your fears are most reasonable. The man in the winter of his life is indeed more likely to die. I assure you, madam, tis a medical fact. But, methinks you wish to know whether this man be afflicted with a grave health condition, do you not? To wit, any ailment that might soon prove fatal? Forsooth I do. That is my question precisely. Why, Dr. Foreman, tis as if you have a gift for reading minds. <laughs> uh, merely the gift of logical surmise, madam. Let us see whether a judgment of the stars may calm your fears. Uh, does Mr... Uh, what was your gentleman's name? Mr. George Middleton, a wool merchant. <clears throat> does Mr. Middleton have any ailments that might hasten his death? Mr. Sharp, I have exceeding excellent news for you. Mr. Middleton has only the most trifling of ailments, dropping down of the piss. 
though I must advise you that marrying a man who suffers from dropping down of the piss would pose certain uh, laundry-related challenges, but widowhood is not likely to be one of them, <laughs> at least not imminently. Blessed day! What wondrous news! However, there is one other small thing in my chat. It seems your future husband does also suffer from an unreasonable fear of the heights. Such a fear could aggravate Mr. Middleton's condition. He would be advised to avoid tall buildings, bridges and mountains. Or at least be sure he takes a change of breeches along with him on any such outings. <laughs> oh, verily? Then I will follow your advice most carefully, Dr. Foreman. I will now to Mr. Middleton go and accept his proposal of marriage. <laughs>